The art of medicine is to use the science of medicine to treat the person and not the disease. Therein lies the convergence of art and science in the practice of medicine. This famous quote is given by none other than our guest of honor, Dr. Aju Matthew. We are delighted to have a compassionate and gifted doctor as our guest of honor. To introduce a guest of honor, I now call upon Dr. Debu George Matthew, Professor and Head of the Department, Department of Oral Pathology. Over to you, sir. Good evening to you all. I was introduced to a man who dared to dream and achieve the heights the medical profession can offer, yet a humble and down-to-earth compassionate human being. He graduated from the Government Medical College Trivandrum. He completed his residency training in internal medicine and fellowship in medical oncology and hematology from the University of Pittsburgh. He also holds an MPhil degree in epidemiology from the University of Cambridge. He was a recipient of Shell Centenary Scholarship, Commonwealth Scholarship, Jawaharlal Nehru Scholarship, Hinduja Scholarship during his tenure in the Cambridge University. He was also the recipient of Edward Ronald Teaching Award from the University of Kentucky. He, will, he has worked as an assistant professor of internal medicine and a co-director of hematology and oncology program in the University of Kentucky. He was a principal investigator for at least nine clinical trials at the Marquis Cancer Center, the University of Kentucky. He is an American board certified oncologist and hematologist. He has numerous publications in the peer-reviewed journals and is a sought-after speaker in various national and international scientific forums. He is currently working as a medical oncologist and hematologist at the Ernagula Medical Center and the MOAC Medical College. He is also a senior medical advisor to the Karkinos Healthcare and is also an adjunct faculty to the University of Manipal. He is the director of Kerala Cancer Care, an online platform to educate cancer patients. He is an honorary consultant of the Trivandrum Institute of Palliative Sciences. It is my honor and privilege to introduce a luminary in the field of medicine. It's none other than our guest of honor, Dr. Aju Matthew. He is definitely a role model for our young graduates to follow. Thank you. I now heartily invite our guest of honor to address the gathering. Congratulations to all of you for graduating your dental uh, course. You're all dental surgeons, class of uh, 2017. But more importantly, congratulate you because you cannot be replaced by a machine. AI or machine learning can never replace you. In fact, you know, I recently did a study where I tried to plug in my patient details, about 50 patients that I see in my cancer care, into chat GPT. And I found that 50% of the time, chat GPT is spot on accurate. And I'm sure Honorable Justice may also agree that if some of the arguments are put into a chat GPT, some of the judgments can also be produced chat GPT version. But you, with your hands, what you're going to do can never be replaced by AI or ML. So you have a job always as long as mankind exists, as long as there are teeth to work on. But as you can see, you are all in a chrysalis stage. You're starting your career. This is the beginning of your career. And I like to uh, draw uh, the beginning of a career to how we build a city. And my tip for you today is summed in one line. Rome wasn't built in a day. Roma Samrajim, Rome wasn't built in a day. Always remind yourself that. That is the metaphor for how you're going to build your career. Now, I want to illustrate the certain thoughts that I came to my mind to help you as you think about your future career. Now, I want to illustrate using some of the, uh, my personal anecdotes or stories from my own life. When you design a city or build a city, or when you design a career or build your own life, the first thing you got to do is you got to plan or prepare. Um, and that means sometimes it is to plan or prepare for further studies. Sometimes it is to start your own private practice. Indecisiveness is never helpful. Now, when I graduated my medical course, the traditional view was to go to uh, super specialization or specialization, MD general medicine. But I was keen on doing something called epidemiology and barely no one knew what epidemiology was at that time. 
So I took a, a, a detour, I took an alternate route, applied uh, for scholarship in Cambridge University where they were teaching epidemiology and I won full scholarship. And every single one of my mentors, my classmates, my peer group, except two people, my parents, said, you're the stupidest person on planet Earth, you're leaving a very lucrative practice. I had already secured MD general medicine seat. So I actually had, a, had to take a very brave decision at that time, which was to quit, resign, and just leave to the UK to do this one year epidemiology course. But I decided I want to do this because you know, it was my passion. I want to do research. I want to do studies on why disease happens. So I wanted to equip myself. So I decided, I planned, I prepared. I wanted to take this detour. I went, did this course, went to the US, got back into clinical medicine and came back. And lo and behold, COVID hit and everybody know what epidemiology is all about. So sometimes when you have to build your career, sometimes when you have to build a city, plan, prepare, don't be indecisive. If you want to pursue super specialization, specialization, do that. But if you want to set up shop somewhere, do that. Prepare or plan your career. It is very important when you are building a city or when you're building a career, you got to practice your trade. You know, when I was doing my residency in internal medicine in the US, there were strict guidelines. No doctor can work more than 80 hours a week. And some months, we barely worked for 40 hours a week. So there was 40 extra hours doing nothing. And almost all of my classmates, which is basically Americans, I used to study in a, an American dominated program, Almost all of them didn't do much, they just chilled it out. But I decided to moonlight. Of course, it pays some extra money. But I knew that only if I see patients, if I experience what patient care is all about, unless I see patients, I won't be able to understand who's sick, who's not. So you get that clinical intuition only by seeing patients. So I practice my trade. I just practice my trade. So much so that I can summarize tons of patient information in just hardly a few minutes. And that holds me good even now. So if I, if I have a busy clinic, if I have patients coming from multiple consultations across the world, I can sum up all their information in one line very easily. That's because I practiced my trade when I was young. So when you're building your career, practice your trade. The next one is people. Rome wasn't built in a day, it was built by people. Your career will not be built by yourself alone. You need people by your side. You need allies. Each of you are your own allies. You're on your best friend, right? You need allies. You need mentors. You need people who can show you where the water is so that you can go drink. You need sponsors. You need people who can show you where the water is and give you a mug to go and gather the water. That's called sponsors. You need good people in your life. You need allies. Mentors, sponsors, and you also need some detractors. I'm sure, and I've had that experience too, you're going to find people who will always try to pull you down. Just don't listen to that. Just think about your allies, your mentors, your patients, your family. Forget your detractors. So when you're building a career, when you're building a city, as a metaphor for building a career, think about the people that you're going to have in your life. But Remember, you're going to have detractors. And when you have detractors, the next P, when you're building your city, when you're building your career, is persist. You may have detractors, or you yourself may be your greatest detractor. But remember, you've got to persist. <coughs> persist in doing good. Persist in standing your ground with integrity. You know, one of the interesting things that happened is, you know, you will always find avenues to be less honest. It's very easy. That's the easiest road to take. But if you want to travel far in your career, if you want to really advance in your career and be in steady ground, practice integrity in your practice. Very important. So persist in doing good, persist in standing your ground with integrity, and persist in caring for others. You know, at the end of the day, no one cares how much you know until they know how much you care. Let me repeat that again. No one cares how much you know until they know how much you care. So care about others. People, persist. Persist in doing good, 
persist in caring for others. And finally, ultimately, providence matters. Providence is God, or sometimes it's universe. If you're an atheist, it's probably the universe. You know, Paulo Coelho said, sometimes when you're so committed to achieving a task, the universe conspires you to get it. But I believe in providence, God conspiring to get you where you got to be. You know, I came from the U.S. hoping that I would be in the government sector, build something grand here. I didn't care about the money, so I decided I'll join the Cochin Cancer Research Center. I waited for six months without a job, aiming to get a salary that was a fixed salary of 70,000 rupees. That's a fraction of what I used to earn in the U.S. I waited for <laughs> six months. Almost every single pay authority, personal authority approved my job. But at the last minute, six months jobless in India, coming from the U.S. where I was much sought after, waiting to join a government sector job so that I can build a cancer center in my own city, which was my dream. And at the last minute, somebody just said, I came from the U.S., and somebody with American qualification cannot practice in Kerala, that it is unethical to practice in Kerala. So providence, through that act or that person, stopped me from joining the government sector. And lo and behold, looking back, that was the best decision I could have done. Because as you all know, I, my career would have been wasted if I had joined the government sector at that time. It's been four years since I've returned. Nothing else has happened. So sometimes, even when you want to make a big mistake in your career, I was going to make that big mistake. Providence supported us. So when you're building your city, class of 2017, your career, remember, Rome wasn't built in a day. So have patience. If you want to do studies, study. If you want to set up practice, practice. Don't be indecisive. Build your career, build your city, plan, prepare. Practice your trade. Have good people by your side. But you're going to have detractors. When that happens, persist in doing good. Persist in caring for others. And finally, have the spirit of providence with you so that you can reach your destination. And that's all that matters. Now, I applaud all your parents, your relatives, your siblings, your teachers who have stood by your side as you achieve this great task of starting your course or finishing your course and starting your career. Now is the challenge. But remember, at the end of the day, all of us, your teachers are with you. Each of you are going to be your next best help, your best ally and best friend. So be together, stand in unity. Remember, Rome wasn't built in a day. Your career will not be built in a day. Be patient. Over time, you're going to achieve what you really want to achieve. Set your mind on it and work on it. Thank you.